What's your spirit animal? I can see myself being an uh, elephant. Really? <laughs> but at the same time, butterfly. What is it that makes this team so resilient? I'm, I'm going to take it. Marsh is a bit crispy tonight. So. <laughs> yeah. What's the first thing you do with more money? Is there any big purchase, anything you had in mind you wanted to Nothing. I, I got dinner yesterday for $8. And, and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> between its legs and flipped it just inside the near post. Can you believe it? Welcome in everybody to this episode of Off the Ice presented by Truly Hard Seltzer. And I am truly excited to have our next guest, David Posternock of the Boston Bruins. What's up, Pasta? Hi, Catherine. Not much. Uh, you know, just off the practice straight from the shower. So all fresh up, ready to do this. <laughs> nice. Well, we thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, and fresh off of an outdoor game in Lake Tahoe, I want to uh, talk to you about that experience and what it was like for you to play outdoors in such a beautiful setting like that. Yeah, that, that was beautiful. You know, uh, my favorite part about the game was that we actually get to play in the sun and in the dark. So that was really beautiful. I love that. Marshan through the sun, cross ice, they score! Right away, it's Pasternak! It was a great experience. We topped it with a win, and, and uh, it was so much fun. We enjoyed it. I'm glad that we could be part of it. Yeah, ah, baby, let's go! Yeah! Woohoo! That's what we do, man! Yeah. Yeah, super exciting. I know you mentioned you had to make some adjustments. You probably needed those 90s glasses the entire game, huh? That would have been nice if you could have played with those. Yeah, that was fun, actually. It was so bright. I, as soon as I left the curtain locker room, I was like, oh, my God, I need to put the glasses on. So that was fun. I couldn't keep it for the game, though. They didn't feel confident enough, but that was so much fun. You know, obviously, I saw the glasses made it all around the world, so it was cool. What did you do with your 90s gear? Is it like tucked away in a closet maybe to bring it out for Halloween or something? It's my original plan, just leave it at that hotel room because I we had to like go quick to the bus, shower at the room and fly back home. So I, I was gonna I was gonna let you leave it there and, and, and I just couldn't. I just no. couldn't. So I had to pack it in quick and, and it's just hanging in my closet. So I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but um, the glasses made it back too. So maybe, maybe one time I, I put it back on. Yeah, you got to whip them out, maybe a Stanley Cup final game seven. Who knows? Just throw it out there. Hey, I want to play your post game interview real quick uh, from the outdoor game. Take a listen. Why are you wearing the glasses now? I assume it's <laughs> I assume it's not sunny uh, or is it just it just you enjoy you enjoy having them on? Well, we were listening Barbie Girl before you guys asked me to the media. So I was kind of dancing with his glasses out in the locker room and, and then you guys ruined it and I had to go answer the question. So I missed the Barbie Girl song and, uh, you know, who knows what's going to be on when I come back. <laughs> oh. So the media, the media ruined it for you, Pasta, to listen to Barbie Girl. So I thought now would be an opportunity. We're going to play Barbie Girl for you so you can just dance a little bit, show us your moves. Get a redemption, right? Let's take two on the Barbie girl. Yeah, nice. Oh, we got it coming. Oh, my God. Pull me up. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at it. I would love to be in that video clip right there. Oh, that hairstyle. That's my next goal. That's amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. <laughs> Love it. That's a great video. Classic. Can't yeah. go wrong with that one. No, that was a great one. I love it. Hey, Pasta, talk to me about September 2017. You signed this massive contract extension to stay with the Boston Bruins, $40 million. And I heard a story. Where was the first place you went after you signed that deal? The first meal you wanted to have? <laughs> well, I, w I was staying at the hotel, right? And uh, that was uh, the small across the hotel. So I, I remember going uh, get some food and and I, I remember I was saying I was just getting like uh, rice and chicken from uh, just those fast food places in, in the mall. Uh, and um, that's legit the first thing I've done when I came to Boston. That's awesome. That's, like, right? that's the same story, right? It's a, yeah, it's the same yeah. story, man. I love it. I think it's, it's great. Teriyaki and rice for $7 <laughs> and boom, just sat down in the middle of the room, um, middle of the mall, had a, you know, just a nice lunch with myself. 
<laughs> nice. Seven dollars. Can't go wrong, right? You gotta save every penny these days. Do you get recognized a lot when you do that? Like when you go anywhere in Boston, or is it kind of you just kind of fly under the radar? Oh uh, well, yeah, well, at that point, uh, not really, to be honest. Now obviously the uh, growing a little bit bigger. Uh, so yes, but there's still a lot of uh, you know Boston places. Just you know, you still can go to the part of the cities that uh, nobody has any clue of you. So um, you know, in and in, in and there, definitely better here in than Prague. So yes, yes, I'm sure you're a big superstar over there. Okay, I'm gonna play a little game with you called Pasta and Friends, where I want to get to know your teammates through your eyes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So first off, who's got the best nickname on the team? Oh, I shit. It's gonna be me. I mean, like, come on. Like, I was gonna say it's hard to talk pasta. That's a tough start, like, uh, with this question. But I, I'm gonna go with me, and then uh, I can I can throw in one more, baby. Uh, I like I like uh, <laughs> I like uh, Yaro Yaro Halak. He he has a bunch of here. He has a Yaroslav. He has Jerry. He has Jay. It's just a lot of them, so you can't go wrong with uh, calling him any of these. Yeah, Jerry, that's a new one. I didn't know that. Jerry Halak. I might have to use that on the air one of these days. <laughs> Did you see his mullet on the outdoor game? That's a perfect Jerry. Yeah, he is. Jerry <laughs> nickname for awesome. him. <laughs> okay, who's got the best sense of style? Um, I like Matt Grizzly. He, mm -hmm. he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty good. Really? Yeah, he's, he's right. all right. He's, uh, Surprised me many times, you know, the way he comes to the ring. So I, I like it. He wears the heads a couple of times. So uh, I, I, I would go with him. Who's got the best goal scoring celebration? I'm uh, going to go with Jake Debrask. I, I don't know where he gets these old sellies, but it feels like every time he scores, he, he has a celly prepared already before uh, before he even scores. Max into the corner. Palmieri right to Debrask. He scores. <laughs> That's something that uh, I'm a little jealous of. Usually when I prepare my celebration uh, before I score, the, then I either forget it or just don't do it right. So I just gave up. So it's definitely JD. I mean, you've scored a heck of a lot of goals, Pasta. When did your goal scoring celebration come about? When did you first discover that you had an idea of what you wanted to do when you scored a goal? Um, I mean, I... I don't know I, how I said I usually want to I want to celebrate you know you just scored a goal in the best league in the hockey in the whole world so you want to celebrate but at the same time how I said I'm just so bad at it that it just doesn't come come that quick in me and, and it's too late so um, you know I just usually go with the classic ones and, and you can't go yeah. wrong with the classic ones. So. No, you can't go wrong indeed. Okay. According to a 2020 poll, this teammate of yours was voted the dirtiest player in the NHL by other NHL players. Who it is? Do you yeah. want to guess? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's kind of an easy <laughs> one, right? <laughs> That's an easy one. Okay. One of your teammates has an Instagram famous dog named the Golden Bodie Boy. He's got over 2,000 followers. Do you know who that is? Uh, maybe Charlie Coyle. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Yeah, you got yeah, it. It's yeah. a big golden retriever. Yeah, I like. I saw, <laughs> met him a couple times too. So he's that uh, famous. Two thousand. Oh my 2, god. Two thousand. If I knew he had two thousand followers, I would act totally different towards him. <laughs> Ask for his autograph next time. Exactly. <laughs> okay, this teammate of yours. This is a little tidbit. This teammate of yours was one of my first interviews in two thousand and five. We were both starting our careers during the NHL lockout season in Providence. To Karas. No, very close though. 2005. I, Played I for the Berger was already here, so it, was, it wasn't Berger 03 or 04, I think maybe, or maybe earlier. So is he still on my team, right, right now? Mm hmm. 05, very crutchy. Okay, that's the second one, but you were right the first time. It was Patrice Bergeron. Was it? Oh, yeah, I he started that. in Boston, but during the lockout, he was playing in Providence. He was one of my first interviews. David Krejci came a year later. Okay, so I missed that part. You said it was a lockout. Okay, because he did start his season 03, right? First yes. year in the Okay, yeah, yeah. you got it. Oh, you're good. There you oh. go. Well, we'll give it to you. Uh, <laughs> okay, this current teammate of yours was the first Bruin to record a playoff hat trick in 2011 since Cam Neely had done it two decades earlier. Nathan Horton. No, but that's a really good guess. That's a good, that's guess. A really good guess. He's a current teammate of yours. Okay. Um... 2011 hat trick. No, there's a Bergy again. I can't go wrong with no, Bergy. Who's your childhood idol on your oh team? Oh my God, Kretsch. 
<laughs> um, so I was, I just mixed these two answers up. I had to give you a crutch one there because I know how much you look up to yeah. him. That's awesome. I okay. I messed it up. And then these two teammates of yours made up a Terriers defense pair. They were coached by Rangers coach David Quinn. Who's that? All right. Uh, Snack Boy. That's a good nickname, too. <laughs> Charlie McAvoy and Matt Grizzly. You got it. And you're good. You know your teammates well. I'm impressed, Pasta. All right. But how well do you know your pastas? That's what I really want to know. I'm going to show you. Uh, some slides of some famous pasta. Oh, we're, oh yeah, we're gonna see. Now you get you get a point for each one you get correct, and there's okay. six possible points. Okay, you ready? If you can name that pasta, gonna try name that pasta. Okay, spaghetti. Let's you go. You got it. Anyway, it's my favorite. For every single fan asking who what's my favorite pasta, I'm tired of this question. Spaghetti. Yes. Okay. Thank you for the answer. We got it. <laughs> mm. That's a good one. You see, like. I know that there's a name, but I see the spaghetti under that again. Oh, yeah. damn it. What, the flat spaghetti. What's the flat spaghetti I called? Uh, pass. Okay, pass. It's fettuccine. It's fettuccine. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Hard one. Okay. Macaroni? Mm, yeah, close. It's tortellini. <laughs> You're funny. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Oh, my God. Penna. You got it. Awesome. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, ravioli. Ding, ding, ding. Oh. oh. That is all. Oh, my God. This is. I know I have it. I, don't. I mean, what does it look like? What do men wear on their suits sometimes? What does it look like? It looks like a bow tie. You got it. That's yeah. bow tie. Another word. Farfalle. Oh, really? Let's go farfalle. Okay. We got five out of six. Thanks, thanks for the crew. Appreciate the crew. Fettuccine is the only one you didn't get. So that's yeah, pretty, pretty good. good. Well done. Well, you're living, up, you're living up to your nickname. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. You ready for some fishbowl questions? All right. Okay. Usually I have you pick these out, but since we're doing this virtually, I have my fishbowl. Okay. Perfect. Love it. All right. If you could eat one more meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, crepes. Ooh, what kind of crepes? Uh, crepes with Nutella and, and uh, raspberries on. Oh, that sounds so darn good. They are waiting Very on nice. me today for lunch. You're having that for lunch? No, they're waiting at me at home, so. Right? <laughs> no, I, better, I better hurry this up then. Man, we got Nutella waiting at home. <laughs> Okay, how do you feel when you see one of your commercials on television? Oh my God, turn it off. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I just, you know, I, I like, I just can't really hear my voice. My voice is so deep, you know, and I, oh. like, so strong that I, I just hate to hear my, I, I don't think I have ever watched my interview in my <laughs> really? life. Even that Barbie girl was painful to watch, so. Oh. I, I, I don't like it. I like the acting though, but as soon as I start talking, I'm just like, oh my gosh. That's funny because we love when we see your commercials on TV. By the Thanks way, I love to work yeah, with Duncan. It's awesome. They're great people, and we all they are. Together. They're great people, and I know you had an opportunity to do a commercial with Kendall Coin Schofield as well. Yeah. Is it true that you told Duncan that you would only take the same amount of money they were willing to pay Kendall as well? You didn't want an unequal pay for both of you guys. Yeah, that was obviously we were doing. A, she was even doing more part, all the talking. It was she was unbelievable. I was like, how are you getting all these? <laughs> Sentences, and then I have one one sentence to say, and I, I always mess it up. And she had to go again and, and tell all these four sentences uh, in a row. And I then I just came there with one word, and I messed it up for her. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I know, fun, fun working with Kendall, and nice yeah. to meet her. Obviously, we always appreciate your support too. Okay, next question here. Um, you get to pick the music that the Bruins skate onto the ice at TD Garden. What song do you pick? Uh. Kind of like your walk-up song of baseball. What is it? Ooh, that's that's different. If I pick for everybody, it's I, I just you know what the one stuck in my memory is in the playoffs when the whole fans was uh, singing Bon Jovi, "Living on a Prayer." That was unbelievable. I can't wait to hear that again. You know, uh, hopefully soon. So if I pick for a whole team that we could only listen, that would be the song. Okay, awesome. I didn't even think that there'd be a different song for a walk-up compared to the arena. I'm a yeah, Jersey girl, so I appreciate the Bon Jovi reference. Awesome. Well done. <laughs> okay. If you want to hear your own song to walk up or for everybody, you know, that's the Yeah. Point. All right. I like your what would your what would your own song be? 
Uh, it's just so many. Probably, uh, it would be probably something you wouldn't understand. Okay. <laughs> Different language? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, who's the most challenging player to face in the NHL? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go, you know, Gabriel Landesko is hard to play against. You get to play against him a couple of times, only a year with normal schedule. So he's a, he's a pretty good uh, tough to play against from the forward, you know, and um, Shea Weber obviously is uh, tough to play against from the back end. Okay. And now this year you get your first dose of playing against Big Z too. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. It's yeah. nicer when he's on your team, huh? That was always nicer to do. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. That's why I'm eating crepes, so I have strength tomorrow for tomorrow's game, you know? That's right. That's right. You got to eat your crepes. I love it. Okay. Who's a famous person you'd be really nervous to meet? Ooh. Hmm. Really? I I think... Uh, what's her name? It's actor. Her name, last name is Wilson. But I, I don't remember uh, her first name. Rebel. Rebel, Rebel Wilson. Wilson. Oh, yeah. I love her. She's so funny. But I, I think I, I'll be a little nervous about try to show her your own humor. But she's funny. I, I love all her movies. That's a great answer. I love that. We're going to have to get Rebel to a Bruins game when you guys get back the fans in attendance. I think right. we've got to work on that. I don't want to make you nervous during a game, though. Maybe afterwards we'll, we'll bring her in. <laughs> all right. <laughs> last time. Humor. Yeah, she's funny. You guys would get along great. Two good senses of humor. I like it. <laughs> all right. Last question. What's your spirit animal? Hmm. That's a good one. There's so many. I, I can see myself being uh, elephant. Really? <laughs> but at the same time, butterfly. Okay. I need to understand where you just came up with this. What about you makes you feel like the elephant? And what do you like about being a butterfly? This is unbelievable. I've never heard a response like this. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty loud person. I'm I'm heavy walker. Okay. Or I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. I will, like I, my neighbors can hear me probably walking <laughs> at home, and, and then I'm just as nice as butterfly. Ah, oh, I love that. Well done, Pasta. I appreciate that. I like the thoughtfulness around it. If I reference you as a butterfly on the air, people are gonna think I'm crazy. But now they'll know where it came from. I think then, yeah. <laughs> okay.